All right, so it's time for Advent of Code 2020, uh, day two. And if you haven't watched day one, um, the link is down in the description. But basically, Advent of Code is a series of puzzles counting down the days to Christmas. Uh, this person who creates Advent of Code releases one, actually two puzzles every day. Um, and I'm going to do every single one of them, hopefully, um, and make videos about it. So obviously, there's going to be spoilers in this video. So uh, if you want to go solve these puzzles first, uh, I'll put the link to the puzzles in the description. Um, but if you're just here to like see the solutions, um, I guess, here you go. Okay, so I'm going to read the problem. Day 2, Password Philosophy. Your flight departs in a few days from the coastal airport. The easiest way down to the coast from here is via to Tobogon. Tobogon. I don't know. The shopkeeper at the North Pole Togerman uh, rental shop is having a bad day. Something's wrong with our computers. We can't log in. You ask if you can take a look. Their password database seems to be a little corrupted. Some of the passwords wouldn't have been allowed uh, by the official Tagoban, uh, Tagoban corporate policy that was in effect when they were chosen. To try to debug the problem, they have created a list, your puzzle input, of passwords according to the corrupted database and the corporate policy when, of when that policy and the corporate policy when that password was set. For example, suppose you have the following list. Um, they give you a list. Each line uh, gives the password policy and then the password. The password policy indicates the lowest and highest number of times a given letter must appear for the password to be valid. For example, 1 to 3 means that the password must contain A at least one time and at most three times. In the above example, two passwords are valid. In the middle password, CDEFG is not. It contains no instances of B. Okay, so it just explains. Example, how many passwords are valid according to their policies? Okay, so this doesn't... Okay, this doesn't seem like that difficult of a problem. Basically, we just have to like count the instances of each letter. Okay, so the input size is a thousand. The length of these shouldn't be any longer than, let's say, 20, 30, 20. It shouldn't be longer than 20. So my idea here is just basically to bash um, but we also have to take a careful look at the input, so. <sighs> okay, so um, for now I'm going to pause the recording uh, just to make this video shorter. And afterwards I'll explain. Yeah, and then show you the code. But also I'm going to make this code a little bit bigger. Size 18, so y'all can see it better. Okay, so I'm going to pause the video. Oh yeah, and the reason I'm pausing instead of like making a time lapse is because I don't want to edit this. Um, because I'm, I'm going to have to do this every day. I don't want to do like an edit every day. So, yeah, pausing, cuts. Okay, so we have obtained the initial answer, and that answer is 469. Let's see if that works. Uh, okay. Oh, okay, that's right. Okay, so now we're going to go to part two. Okay. While it appears that you validated the passwords correctly, they don't seem to be what the official Togerman corporate authentication system is expecting. The shopkeeper suddenly realizes that he just accidentally explained the password policy rules from his old job at the sled rental place down the street. The official Togerman corporate policy actually works a little bit differently. Each policy actually describes two positions in the password, where one means the first character, two means the second character, and so on. Okay, no index zero. Exactly one of these positions must contain the given letter. Other occurrences of the letter are irrelevant for the purposes of policy enforcement. Oh, okay. Well, this doesn't seem that much different. Um, I feel like I should just, cause like these videos are going to be very short. So, um, actually no, why don't I, why don't I go explain part one first? Okay. So basically we just have to make sure that the occurrences of each letter, um, are within this range. And that's pretty easy because then for every single password, we just have to count the occurrences of the given letter and then see if th that number of occurrences matches uh, however many we're allowed to have. Um, that's basically what we do here. Okay, on to part two. Okay, so we have obtained an answer, 267. Let's see if it works. Okay, shoot, so it looks like my internet is down. Um, God dang it. Okay. Okay, that's the right answer. Okay, so... 
Yay, we are done. Okay, I want to explain this as well. So basically, mm, I should start tracking my time. Okay, so basically the idea is that we are given the positions, um, and then we have to subtract one from them because uh, like, it's from index 1, not index 0. And we just have to check those indices in the given password, and then exactly one of them has to match uh, the given character. And how we do that is we use the exclusive or function. And I guess I should explain. Um, uh, it's notated XOR. And basically, it guarantees that exactly one of them is one of the given inputs. It's, it's a binary operator, so it takes in two binary bits, two bits, and then determines if exactly one of them is true. Um, and that's exactly what we want here. So if I draw out the table, um, this might be too much effort. And then this is zero and then one. So zero and zero make zero, obviously. Uh, zero and one make one, because exactly one of them is one. Zero and one make one, and one and one makes zero. So that's the, that's the table uh, for exclusive or operations. Um, and yeah, that's what we use here. Uh, in Python and in many other languages, the notation is that. It's like a caret uh, character. And then we, this just guarantees that exactly one of them matches the given character. And that's that's basically it. So, yeah, hopefully the explanation was good. Um, yeah, I'm going to continue doing these. At uh, the end, or I guess, like, I'll just keep doing these until Christmas. Um, yeah, so I guess one more thing before you go, if you've stayed to the end, um, I think you might enjoy my Twitch channel where I stream, uh, chess games. So that might be fun. Um, yeah, go check it out, check it out at twitch.tv slash womanjeans. I'll put the link down in the description and that's basically all. Um, I'll say thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye.